The first thing to understand about Profoto 6 galleries is that they are all created as custom post types, much like regular posts and pages. As such, they have their own top-level menu item in the WordPress admin area, where you add and view them. Just like posts and pages, they get a unique permalink, which sends someone right to a special gallery page. There are two ways to create a gallery. The first way is much like creating a new post. Go to Galleries Add New in the WordPress admin area. This area should look similar to a post editor if you've ever used WordPress before. Enter a title and use the Add Images button to add images. Here you can select previously uploaded images or upload new ones. I've already uploaded the images that I want to use, so I locate them in the media library and select them all by clicking while holding shift. After highlighting the images that you want, hit the select button. You can also create new galleries while editing posts or pages. Click to create a new gallery from the Profoto dropdown. Upload or select your images and then click the Create New Profoto Gallery button. This will insert a gallery placeholder image in the editor. It will also create a new gallery in the All Galleries area. Click the title of the gallery in the placeholder to edit the gallery directly. The Featured Image option box lets you choose the image that will be used as the grid thumbnail when you use the gallery's grid type. Below the image area, there's a Gallery Style option box. This style determines the type of gallery that will display on the gallery permalink page. When Use Design Setting is selected, the default permalink style is going to apply. And you can select your default style in Profoto Customizer, be in the Template group here, and Galleries. When a gallery is inserted into a page or a template, the gallery style can then be changed to any other style you've created. Let's have a look at gallery styles now. Styles are edited in the customizer in Design Group Galleries. Here, I can edit existing styles or I can create my own. For now, I'm going to create a style to play with called Test Settings. I'll start with the general settings. I choose Thumbnail Grid for my gallery style, and I want the thumbnails to pop up as larger individual images when I click on them, so I make sure to check Thumbnail Click Shows Gallery. I'll go with masonry style layout and a 10 pixel gutter. A gutter is the space between images. I can control how the images change at different widths in the responsive settings. I don't want more than four columns, but I want the images to be able to get pretty small, so I'll set the minimum width to 75 pixels the ideal width to 100, and the max to something like 900. When the single image expanded mode pops up, I don't want it to take over the entire monitor. I just want it to expand to the width of the browser window, so I'm going to go with full window. The gallery controls area has all the settings for what controls will appear and then how they will look. I want the control bar at the bottom and not covering any of the gallery images. I'm fine with these appearance and size settings here for now. For my navigation, I want thumbnails so people can navigate by looking at images and not just dots or numbers. In addition to thumbnail links, I'll enable previous next links and choose a style for them so then viewers can click on the image to navigate as well. Finally, I also want the possibility of an auto-playing slideshow. To test this style, I'm going to choose it for my gallery when I'm editing the gallery. Here's what it looks like then on the front end. I have a masonry grid of thumbnails that is four columns. Now in expanded mode, I have a play pause button, I have previous and next links, and I've got thumbnail navigation. Now, I'm going to go back to the Galleries area in the Customizer to test some different options. Let's switch to the Standard Style, which shows one image at a time, and the Position Transition Style. This will give it more of a slider look. I'll set the background color to nothing so that my white site background shows through. And let's turn off Expanded Mode so as to prevent the full screen or even the full window option. For my controls, I'll go have them overlay the image 
and use dot navigation. I'm going to keep the previous next links. And to make this more of a classic slider, I'll disable the slideshow mode. After saving changes and refreshing the gallery page, we can see how the gallery has changed. It's now a simple slider with dot navigation and no other frills. Let's preview quickly a carousel gallery style. Back in the gallery styles area, I edit my test style and select carousel. One of the most important style options specific to carousels is the height setting. Carousel height is fixed no matter the width of the window. So a good practice is to set the default height. I'll use 500 pixels. Then choose a decreasing height for the more narrow breakpoints represented by these device icons. I'll go with 400 for laptop, 300 for tablet, and 200 for mobile. Previewing the test gallery, I can see that the height of the gallery changes as the browser window gets smaller. In the template galleries area, choose which styles you want to serve as the default for embedded galleries and for the gallery pages themselves. This is also where you can choose to show or hide dates and titles for all your gallery pages. The gallery pages, they're not the only way to see your galleries. You can also insert them into a regular WordPress poster page or as a widget into the layout of one of your templates. First, let's insert it into a page. When editing a page, choose Insert Gallery from the Pro Photo dropdown. Select the gallery you want and insert it. This adds a placeholder that tells you where the gallery is in relationship to other text and images that you might insert. If you decide to override the default style for this particular gallery, then click the Edit link on the placeholder and check the Override box and then choose the style you want. If you want to insert the gallery images as full-size images, there is an option for that here as well. This is handy if you want to leverage the ordering and reordering capabilities in the gallery editor for full-size images that you want to put in a poster or page. So let's put a bit of sample text into this page. When I view the page on the front end, it looks pretty similar to the gallery page, except that now it shows the title and extra content that I added to the page. The other place you can insert galleries is directly into a template layout. You would do this when you want a gallery to appear on all pages or page types that are displaying a certain template. A really common reason for adding a gallery to a layout is for setting up a slideshow that appears uh, at the top of the page above the content of the page that comes from WordPress. And this is how you would do something like a masthead slideshow. Another good reason for adding gallery widgets is when you have a template that you're setting up to be used on just one specific page. So you're going to create the template and then you're going to assign it when you're editing the page just to that page. I have a template called Home Page that is assigned to only the front page of my site. Now I want to put a slideshow there below my menu. So first, when I'm in the template layout area, I select that template from the dropdown. Then I create a new row or block. And in this case, I'm just going to create a new row. And then you want to put it in place. You can drag it around if you need, need be. In my case, it's already in the right spot. Add a gallery widget, select the gallery I want and the style I want, and insert. Now, when I refresh my front page, I see the gallery where it should be. And you can't tell, but this gallery is actually in the template and not in the page content. We are often asked about an ideal image size for galleries. The truth is, there's not one specific size that I can say will work well everywhere and not look pixelated. Gallery images will upsize to fill the current player size, which depends on the browser width and the template width settings. And if full screen is enabled, you might need larger images still. But even then, a full screen on one device might take 5,000 pixels and on another 1,000. So you really need to test it a little bit. 
As a general rule of thumb, we say that a well-compressed image between two and 3,000 pixels should be fine. So that should be your starting point. So that's a bit about how galleries work in Pro Photo 6. Have fun setting them up.